new Samsung Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is the best business smartphone ever, but because of its price you really have to wonder if you absolutely need an Ultra phone. If the answer is yes, then you will find yourself with the best camera phone, thanks especially to its 5x optical zoom and 50x digital zoom, but also for the fun portrait mode filters, and the easy-to-use interface of its camera app. In addition, the even more responsive S Pen stylus lets you take photos remotely, and its super slow-mo video still managed to amaze us. All these extras will help you justify the fact that its 108-megapixel camera, isn't always better in strict side-by-side -side comparisons with the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Google Pixel 4 XL. Samsung's image processing is still aggressively smoothing low-light textures, although we have to admit that the new night mode has improved quite a bit. What's more, the camera of the Note 20 Ultra solved all the problems we had with the sensor on the Samsung Galaxy S20 Ultra. This module added laser autofocus, without it, the out-of-focus photos of the S20 Ultra became so much of an issue that we were forced to recommend people buy the S20 Plus instead, which is equipped with dual-pixel autofocus. The Note 20 Ultra looks and feels more premium than the S20 Ultra, the 6.9-inch AMOLED screen with a dynamic refresh rate of 120Hz is the brightest we've seen so far, the new chipset is even faster, and the battery lasts for a whole day. The S Pen also comes with new features such as new air gestures, and a note app that is capable of syncing voice recordings with scribbled notes. Last but not least, you can turn it into a mini desktop PC or an Xbox console. There are obviously things the Note 20 Ultra can't do, but little matter. For example, even if this phone supports a Quad HD resolution, if you want the 120Hz refresh rate you'll have to settle for full HD resolution, Samsung still fails to offer both, even if OnePlus succeeded in doing so with the 8 Pro. On the other hand, we don't miss the space zoom of the S20 Ultra. It was just a gimmick, since anything beyond 50x zoom is unusable. The same goes for the S20 Ultra's 40 megapixel selfies. The Note 20 Ultra offers 10 megapixel selfies, but the file size and hole punch notch are both smaller. Perhaps the only two things really missing from this otherwise perfect smartphone are the 45 watts fast charging and the 3.5 mm headphone jack. Going back to our question, do you really need this phone? If you don't need the S Pen, then the Galaxy S20 Plus is a more sensible choice. But if you really intend using the S Pen, and money is no problem, then buy the Note 20 Ultra. Design Big is no longer an adjective defining the Note series. Don't get me wrong, this phone is huge, but it shares the same screen size as the S20 Ultra, while being slightly shorter, thinner, and less heavy, making it a little easier to handle. What's different this time around is that Samsung has found ways to make the design better. The Note 20 Ultra insists not following the trend of phones with rounded corners. Instead, it features an almost square frame, that is softened on the sides by the curved display, while the metallic back completes the elegant look. Evolutionary sophistication can also be observed by holding the two notes, 10 and 20, side by side. The bottom bezel on the Note 20 is thinner, and the selfie camera cutout is smaller. That's all? You might ask. Well, there wasn't much else to refine from the older model. The S Pen switched sides and is now holstered on the left, while the same goes for the power button that returned on the right side, where it should have been all along. Let's move on now to the couple of things I don't like with the new design. First and foremost, the hump of the rear camera is large and bulky. Obviously, this is a compromise I'm willing to make in order to have that 5x optical zoom. Wishing for a smaller bump while claiming the same zoom levels is wanting to deny the laws of physics. Anywho, most phone cases will level things so the hump is no longer a problem, and given the size and price of this device, it is better to protect your investment. That said, the design of the camera module is much more sophisticated and sleek than the one on the S20 Ultra. There is no space zoom branding, the aperture for the periscope prism got a circular outline to match the other two sensors, and all three cameras have brushed metal rings around them, which are the same color as the phone. My other problem is with the curved display which can sometimes register accidental touches, or become unresponsive because of the way I'm holding the device. But my real issue concerns the infamous ultrasonic fingerprint sensor beneath the screen. It's the same slow and unpredictable Qualcomm module that we first saw in the S10. The touch area is too small and gives you almost no feedback to indicate that you have identified the correct location. 
my frustration is also compounded by the fact that last December Qualcomm showed off its new ultrasonic fingerprint sensor, that is bigger, faster, and less error-prone. Display The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra features the best display of any other smartphone, at least for another 6 months until Samsung launches the Galaxy S30. The 6.9-inch Super AMOLED display boasts a wide Quad HD Plus resolution, and a dynamic refresh rate of 120Hz. This faster refresh rate was introduced with the Galaxy S20 line, and offers smoother scrolling and better images, especially for games and movies. But it was a feature that the user had to adjust manually. With the Note 20 Ultra, the refresh rate automatically adjusts depending on the content displayed on the screen, thus saving battery life. When reading your emails, for example, the phone is smart enough to limit the refresh rate to just 30 Hz. What hasn't changed is the limitation that with 1440p resolution the refresh rate drops down to 60 Hz. One Plus boasts the same feature with its One Plus 8 series, but it allows the screen to be used in 1440p at 120 Hz mode even at the expense of battery life. Combining the 120Hz refresh rate with a 240Hz touch sampling rate makes the Note 20 Ultra incredibly responsive, both when navigating the UI and especially during gaming. Not all games support 120Hz, but there are more than 200 and the list is growing fast. Watching video is just as much of a joy, thanks to the 6.9-inch high-resolution display and HDR support. You can also easily use the Note 20 Ultra outside as its average brightness sits at 650 nits. It can't get as bright as the iPhone 11 Pro, but it's up there with the top performers. In terms of colors, the Note 20 Ultra screen can reproduce 121% of the sRGB color range in natural mode, and 201% in vivid mode, compared to 118% of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. The Note 20 Ultra beats Apple devices on color accuracy as well, scoring a Delta E of 0.24 compared to 0.28 of the iPhone 11 Pro Max. Camera The Note 20 Ultra features a triple camera module, equipped with an autofocus laser sensor, that should address the focus problems we saw on the Galaxy S20 Ultra. The camera module consists of a 108-megapixel wide camera with an f-stop 1.8 aperture, the same one that made its debut with the S20 Ultra, Paired with an ultra-wide 12-megapixel camera with a 120-degree field of view and an f-stop 2.2 aperture. Remote photos were for years the real limitation of smartphone cameras, which were incapable of getting the object closer. The Note 20 Ultra solves this problem with a telephoto lens with a 5x optical zoom and a 50x digital zoom, which is why it stands out from the competition. We took clear photos up to a 10x zoom. Yes, this telephoto lens does not have the 100 times zoom of the S20 Ultra, but the loss of quality of the latter makes it largely unusable. The so-called space zoom was a marketing trick that doesn't serve the Note 20 Ultra. The range of the 50 times digital zoom is more than enough, but the real star of the show is the 5 times optical one. The night mode of the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is also very good, but it's not as bright or colorful as that of the iPhone 11 Pro Max or Pixel 4. Even in an almost completely dark environment, you'll get usable shots, but both the iPhone 11 Pro Max and Google Pixel 4 can show more detail. The Note 20 Ultra also does a good job with portraits, but Samsung's tendency to over-smooth faces continues to bump us the wrong way. The iPhone 11 Pro Max's portraits are definitely more enjoyable. Software The Galaxy Note 20 Ultra ships with Android 10, and the Samsung One UI version 2.5 layered on top. Both will soon be upgraded to Android 11 and One UI version 3.0. While Samsung hasn't always been timely with Android updates, it has committed to upgrading the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra up to Android 13. The Note 20 Ultra is geared toward users who are looking for a productivity device. Users who love multitasking will enjoy the new DeX experience, which is now fully wireless. You can now stream whatever shows on your Note 20 Ultra directly to a Miracast-compatible smart TV, and use your mobile phone screen as a touchpad to move the cursor around. The other key feature is the link to Windows function, which allows you to access your mobile apps on any Windows 10 PC. Thus you can send and receive messages, make calls, and see your notifications directly on your computer screen. Last but not least, thanks to the power of Microsoft's xCloud game streaming service, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is able to play more than 100 Xbox titles via Xbox Game Pass. 
S. Penn. Generation after generation has become increasingly difficult to distinguish between the S and Note series. This year in particular, the only difference between these two devices is the small piece of plastic called S Pen. The S Pen has been one of Note's biggest strengths from the start, and the Note 20 Ultra introduces some key features and improvements in an attempt to make it stand out as a legitimate advantage compared to the S20 range. This S Pen looks exactly the same as the previous generation. The only difference is that because of the amount of space the camera takes up, Samsung moved the S Pen's housing to the bottom left side next to the speaker. Samsung cites 24 hours of standby autonomy, which is a huge step up from the 10 hours of the Note 10. Judging by the lack of physical changes, this result is probably due to battery optimization. In addition, the new S Pen benefits from a faster response time of just 9 milliseconds, capable of providing a feeling keener to pen and paper when taking notes or drawing, while the new air gestures allow you to control the device by waving the S Pen through the air. But the feature that makes the Note 20 Ultra a potentially perfect note-taking device, is that you can now embed voice notes into handwritten notes and sync them. That way, if you miss something or can't figure out what the hell you wrote down, you can hear that particular segment of your notes and make out what was said. Performance The Note 20 Ultra is equipped with Qualcomm's latest and greatest Snapdragon 865 Plus Soak. This chipset is 10% faster, and offers 10% more graphics power compared to the previous Snapdragon 865. This obviously matters to customers from North America, South Korea, Japan and China that get the new Snapdragon 865 Plus variant. Unfortunately, customers that reside in Europe, India, Brazil, and Australia, must make do with the old Exynos 990 chipset. This processor is also paired with 12GB of RAM, and 128 or 512 gigabytes of internal memory that you can expand up to 1 terabyte using the micro SD card slot. On Geekbench the Note 20 Ultra finished ahead of all other Android devices except for the Asus ROG Phone 3, the only other phone equipped with the same Snapdragon 865 Plus chip. The iPhone 11 Pro, however, beat all of them. Of course, gaming on the Note 20 Ultra is just amazing, and PUBG Mobile, for example, runs flawlessly in its highest settings. Autonomy The Note 20 Ultra will easily last a full day of normal use with a single charge. In addition to the solid autonomy, Samsung has equipped this phone with 25 watts fast charging, 15 watts fast wireless charging, and wireless power sharing, so that you can charge your Qi compatible devices like your wireless earbuds. Verdict The Note 20 Ultra is the pinnacle of phablet phones. It offers the best display an improved S Pen experience, and a host of new features for work and play. The cameras are also stellar, solving the problems that the Galaxy S20 Ultra had. Unfortunately, although the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra is perhaps the best smartphone of 2020, there are a ton of other top-of-the-line phones that cost much less, and one of them is the Samsung Galaxy S20 Plus. If you don't need the S Pen, the S20 Plus hits the sweet spot for most people. If you want an even cheaper device, the Galaxy S20 offers a very similar user experience, and its more compact form factor makes it much easier to use with just one hand. If, on the contrary, you absolutely need the S Pen, but can live without the 120Hz refresh rate, last year's Galaxy Note 10 Plus will give you 90% of the Note 20 Ultra's experience for 60% of the price.